on the historic day of consecration of Sri Ram Mandir in Ayodhya. over the past 10 years has complemented people-centric, inclusive development, following are some of the major elements. One, all forms of infrastructure, physical, digital or social, are being built in record time. All, number two, all parts of the country are becoming active participants in economic growth. Number three, digital public infrastructure, a new factor of production as it in the 21st century, is instrumental in formalization of the economy. Number four, goods and services tax has enabled one nation, one market, one tax. Tax reforms have led to deepening and widening of tax base. Number five, strengthening of the financial sector has helped in making savings, credit and investments more efficient. Number six, GIFT, IFSC and the Unified Regulatory Authority, IFSCA, are creating a robust gateway for global capital and financial services for the economy. Number seven, Proactive inflation management has helped keep inflation within the policy band. Now, the global context, Honorable Speaker, sir. Geopolitically, global affairs are becoming more complex and challenging with wars and conflicts. Globalization is being redefined with reshoring and friendshoring, disruption and fragmentation of supply chains and competition for critical minerals and technologies. A new world order is emerging after the COVID pandemic. India assumed the G20 presidency during very difficult times for the world. The global economy was going through high inflation, high interest rates, low growth, very high public debt, low trade growth, and climate change changes. The pandemic has led to a crisis of food, fertilizer, fuel and finances for the world while India successfully navigated its way. The country showed the way forward and built consensus on solutions for those global problems. The recently announced India Middle East Europe economic corridor is a strategic and economic game changer for India and others. In the words of Honorable Prime Minister, the corridor, and I quote, will become the basis of world trade for hundreds of years to come. And history will remember that this corridor was initiated on Indian soil, unquote. Wish, vision for Vikasit Bharat. Our vi vision for Vikasit Bharat is that of prosperous Bharat in harmony with nature, with modern infrastructure, and providing opportunities for all citizens and all regions to reach their potential. With confidence arising from strong and exemplary track record of performance and progress, Earning Sapka Vishwas, the next five years will be years of unprecedented development and golden moments to realize the dream of developed India by 2047. The trinity of demography, democracy, and diversity backed by Sapka Prayas has the potential to fulfill aspirations of every Indian. As Honorable Prime Minister in his Independence Day address to the nation mentioned, I quote, there is no dearth of opportunities, as many opportunities as we want. The country is capable of creating more opportunities. Sky is the limit, unquote. Strategy for Amrit Kal. Our government will adopt economic policies 
that foster and sustain growth, facilitate inclusive and sustainable development, improve productivity, create opportunities for all, help them enhance their capabilities and contribute to generation of resources to power investments and fulfill aspirations. Guided by the principle, reform, perform, and transform, the government will take up next generation reforms and build consensus with the states and stakeholders for effective implementation. It is an important policy priority for our government to ensure timely and adequate finances, relevant technologies, and appropriate training for the micro, small, and medium enterprises, MSMEs, to grow and also compete globally, orienting the regulatory environment to facilitate the growth will be an important element of this policy mix. Aligning with the Panchamrit goals to facilitate sustaining high and more resource efficient economic growth. This will work towards energy security in terms of availability, accessibility and affordability. For meeting the investment needs, our government will prepare the financial sector in terms of size, capacity, skills, and regulatory framework. Aspirational Districts Program. Our government stands ready to assist the states in faster development of aspirational districts and blocks, including generation of ample economic opportunities. Development of the East. Our government will pay utmost attention to make the eastern region and its people a powerful driver of India's growth. PM Awas Yojana Grameen. Despite the challenges due to COVID, implementation of PM Awas Yojana Grameen continued and we are close to achieving the target of three crore houses. Two crore more houses will be taken up in the next five years to meet the requirement arising from increase in the number of families. Rooftop solarization and muft bijli. Through rooftop solarization, one crore households will be enabled to obtain up to 300 units free electricity every month. This scheme follows the resolve of Honorable Prime Minister on the historic day of consecration of Sri Ram Mandir in Ayodhya. <laughs> Following benefits are expected. Savings up to 15 to 18,000 rupees annually for households from free solar electricity and selling the surplus to the distribution companies. Charging of electric vehicles. Entrepreneurship opportunities for a large number of vendors for supply and installation. Employment opportunities for the youth with technical skills in manufacturing, installation and maintenance. Housing for middle class. Our government will launch a scheme to help deserving sections of the middle class, and I quote from Honorable Prime Minister's words, living in rented houses or slums or chawls and unauthorized colonies, unquote, to buy and build, to buy or build their own houses. <laughs> Medical colleges. Several youth are ambitious to get qualified as doctors. They aim to serve our people through improved health care services. Our government plans to set up more medical colleges by utilizing the existing hospital infrastructure under various departments. A committee for this purpose will be set up to examine the issues and make relevant recommendations. 
cervical cancer vaccination. Our government will encourage vaccination for girls in the age group of 9 to 14 years for preven prevention of cervical cancer. Maternal and child health care. Various schemes for maternal and child care will be brought under one comprehensive program for synergy in implementation. Upgradation of Anganwadi centers under Saksham Anganwadi and Portion 2.0 will be expedited, expedited for improved nutrition delivery, 